Hi, my name is Kate McMahon, and I'm your host today for the gallery. Very excited to introduce you to our guest today, Pat Daly. Pat, welcome. Oh, thank you, Kate, and thank you for having me. Yeah, it's very excited to learn a little bit more about your art. Um, currently hanging in the gallery here at the Media Center. We'll be here for about a month. Can you tell us a little bit about your um, experience here on the Cape? How long you've lived here, how it impacts your art? Well, my husband lived here for a number of years and had a restaurant in Dennis and moved down to Florida. And a couple of years ago, we started coming back for the summers and mm -hmm. he bought a house and we finally moved up here officially in 2020. And after 20 years of Florida, I am very happy to be back on the Cape. Oh, that's wonderful. It's a beautiful place. I love the color, the diversity in the homes. Uh, you just don't get that in Florida. Yeah, yeah. It is very, very pretty. Um, now, you and I chatted a little bit before we started, but um, art goes way back at the very early stages of your life, right? I always had colored pencils in a sketchbook or a book in my hands <laughs> growing up constantly. <laughs> it was a choice between doing artwork, you know, going to art college or be going to college for library science and the library won out at that point. Uh -huh. So the artwork kind of continued in the background. Uh, when I became a stained glass craftsman, my skills were helpful in drawing up windows and choosing colors to mm -hmm. cut out of glass to, to build windows and different items that way, lampshades and items. So it, it always still was a very big part of my life. Yeah, yeah, because stained glass is very creative as well. I always told my students when I was teaching, look at a piece of glass as a frozen brush stroke, and if you find that right spot, go for it. Don't cut the next piece on the edge, go into the middle where you're gonna have the best color. And now, it's reverse. I'm trying to create that brush stroke. <laughs> Instead of looking at it in a piece of glass, now I'm trying to actually make it myself on canvas. <laughs> so it's usually a process of mixing two or three, sometimes four colors to get it right. Yeah, yeah. And what um, medium do you work with? I use acrylics. Uh -huh. I started out with oils, and some people say, well, why don't you use oil? I say, well, to be honest, I don't have enough life left in me to wait that long for it to dry. <laughs> So I like acrylics much better. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So what about um, any training that you had to become such an amazing artist as you are? I never really had official training. I had the usual art class you have in primary school. Uh, I, I belonged to the art club in high school at Mount St. Mary Seminary. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, there was a summer in Portland where I had impromptu lessons with Norman Millet Thomas. That was a good summer. That was beer, lobster for lunch, and paint. He wanted somebody to model for him, and I said, oh, I'll sit for you, but I want lessons in painting afterwards. Oh, that's wonderful. So it was, it was an even trade-off. Yeah. Was that a big influence then on your art that summer? He told me I had a talent and to keep working at it. He liked the way I mixed my colors. I I think I get that from my grandfather on my father's side because he was a house painter and you could pick a color off of something and he could mix that paint for you in a heartbeat. Isn't that something? So it might be in the jeans. Yep, it could be. And you've got beautiful colors here on the Cape to work with. Oh, definitely. So can we um, talk a little bit about what we um, are showing the audience today? Well, these are three paintings from Yarmouth Port on this one here with the house with the flag on it. You see that on Route 6A, around by Summer Street, and I took a photograph of that and painted that one. That's my 4th of July on 6A. Except for last summer, the owner of the house put up an old glory flag, so now I have to go take another photograph and maybe paint a new one. <laughs> I love it. I love that house. I recognize that house. It's so pretty. It is. That is. And this one here with the, the little skiff turned over, that was an old... I won't say old, but it was kind of a roughshod boat that was down at Wharf Lane mm -hmm. for a number of years, tied, chained up to a rock so it wouldn't wash out with the tide. And if you go down Wharf Lane, that normally would appear on the left side near the top of the street. And 
recently the owner has refurbished the boat so now it's upright and it's sitting on a mobile trailer for bringing down to the water. But I do have an affinity for Wharf Lane so I like to go down there and look at the water and the old pilings and watch the tide go in and out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was there this past summer and I saw this one here. I saw this boat anchor down the end. And usually there's nothing down there but a little red, not really a lobster boat, but not a tug, but a red boat they call the Colonel, mm -hmm. who have, which I've also painted. But this one here had the sailboat. And I said, oh, that's a nice position. Got nice reflections. The tide was out, so I was able to get some of the, the mud in there and the pilings. And, and that is what the sky looked like that day. Beautiful colors in that sky. Sky... And, and rocks are usually the hardest thing to paint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To get that sky to have that light, fluffy, or windswept look to it. It's beautiful. Now, when, when you were talking about this painting, you mentioned you take a photograph? I like to photograph because that way I can sit at my kitchen table and spend five to six hours painting. Uh, I can't do the plein air. I, w I won't say I can't do it, but I haven't really tried it yet. Okay. I am not a fast painter. Mm -hmm. So if somebody said, you need to paint this in two hours, I would be, I, I think I would probably go into shock trying to do it because I'm not rigid as such, but I like structure. Yeah. So a lot of my paintings are detailed. Very detailed. Beautiful. Bark on the tree here. That <coughs> took three or four hours to get right because you have some of the bark lines. You have, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see the hint of green, like the green moss mm -hmm. in it. And, and to get the play of light on it just right. Tree trunks are not easy yeah. if you want to do the detail. The detail. But if you do the far background where you, can, you don't need the detail, mm -hmm. where you can do it with color, then you can be quicker with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're beautiful pieces. Ah, thank you. And we have plenty more in the gallery here at the Media Center, too. Mm. Um, so I know you've only been here since 2020, full time. However, you've become quite active in the um, art world, if you will, on Cape Cod. Can you share a little bit about what you do? Well, I am the president of the Monday Painters Group in Dennis. We display for 11 weeks in the summer on the Dennis Green in front of the church by the gazebo. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we also, from the sales, give a sizable donation to Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School for it. And I'm also the treasurer of the Yarmouth Art Guild. And so I coordinate the dues and take care of our guest artists. And also as a nonprofit group, we also donate to Dennis, uh, Dennis Yarmouth High School for their art department. And for myself, I run a different drummer craft events. I have four craft shows coming up in the summer at Drummer Boy Park and at Harwich, at Brooks Park. Mm -hmm. And you don't see a lot of artists displaying at craft shows, but you will at the one that I run. I have several artists that have already signed up and uh, they appreciate the venue because it, people see art show and they go, oh, art show. But if you mix it in with a craft show, it gives them more opportunity to be seen. Yes, and makes more sense. For sales and commissions. So I try to support the art that way. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So I always say support the arts, support an artist. Yes, mm -hmm. I love it. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Uh, that is about it, except for the fact that I love that I'm being back in New England. And even though I might paint, you know, mundane things people go by and never pay much mind to. I still find it very inspiring and exciting to, to, to look around and see what's around me. Yeah. Cape Cod is a really beautiful place. It is. Very beautiful. Well, thanks, Pat. We really appreciate you being here today and hanging your art in our gallery. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us today for Gallery. Mm -hmm.